untold stories of our ancestors called to us through the ancient sounds of our drum. If we choose to listen to our drum, we will discover the true rhythm of our past and be guided along life's journey. Kwe, Amataru. Hello, my friends. I'm Josh from the Wyandot Nation, and I'm joined by Jillian from the Wyandot of Anerdon. Our journey has brought us to the Battle of Brownstown. Captain Henry Brush, leading an Ohio Militia Relief Column, was on his way to Detroit to take cattle, supplies, and reinforcements to General William Hall's army, who recently invaded British Canada in July of 1812. While stopped at the River Raisin, located at the southern end of the post of Detroit, Captain Brush became aware of War Chief Tecumseh's growing confederation and British activity along the Detroit River near the Wyandot village of Brownstown. The only road for Captain Brush to reach Detroit, known as Hull's Trace, went directly through that Wyandot village. Hull's Trace was a military road the Wyandots allowed the Americans to build through their village in 1808. When President Jefferson led them to believe the United States would allow Michigan Wyandot to keep their villages forever. After the United States Congress reduced the time they could stay in their village to just 50 years, the Wyandot made several diplomatic attempts to persuade the United States to allow them to keep their villages forever. General Hull attempted to help the Wyandot retain their villages and, in exchange, the Wyandot promised that if their villages were given to them forever, they would protect and keep open General Hull's military road between Detroit and the River Raisin. General Hall failed to persuade the United States to allow the Wyandot to be able to keep their villages in perpetuity, but still believed that the Wyandot would side with the United States and remain neutral during the war. Due to long-standing land disagreements, Wyandot chief Pustietak, or Bart Carrier, commonly known as Roundhead, convinced the Michigan Wyandot to side with War Chief Tecumseh and take the British as their allies. Knowing their two villages were along the Americans' newly improved military supply road, the Wyandot, with the aid of the Confederation and British, evacuated their families, cattle, and valuables to the east side of the Detroit River. To throw off the Americans, the Wyandot leaders made it appear as if they had been taken captive. Captain Brush sent a message to American General and Territorial Governor William Hall asking for reinforcements to help protect the movement of supplies from the River Raisin to the fort in Detroit. General Hall knew that he had to open up communications and his supply line to the River Raisin or he could not hold Detroit. In response to Captain Brush's request, on August 4th, General Hull ordered 150 Ohio Volunteers and 50 Michigan Militia, led by Major Thomas Van Horn, to open the communications lines and protect the shipment of supplies from the River Raisin to Fort Detroit. On August 5th, 1812, Major Van Horn's militia marched in the hot and humid conditions towards the River Raisin in two columns about a hundred yards apart, each led by horsemen and riflemen, with the mail courier between the columns. Three miles north of Brownstown, the militia pushed through a quagmire and arrived at the heavily vegetated Brownstown Creek. As the first U.S. soldiers attempted to ford the creek, War Chief Tecumseh, along with his warriors and British support, ambushed the Americans from the south side of the creek near current day Carlson High School in Gibraltar, Michigan. The Americans retreated, while native warriors pursued them as far north as the Ecorse River.
Although the Americans outnumbered the Warriors at least 8 to 1, they retreated and faced significant casualties. Seven officers and 10 privates were killed, 12 wounded, and 70 were missing, while the natives lost one chief and war chief Tecumseh was wounded. Although this was a small skirmish, he sent a clear and alarming message to General Hull that the supply line to Ohio was not secure and that the Michigan Wyandotte had in fact joined the Confederation. General Hull's worst fears have been realized. He knew that more than ever, he had to open communications with the River Raisin and secure reinforcements. General Hall attempted two more times to open communications and supply lines with the River Raisin, but ultimately because of the United States betrayal of the Native nations, General Hall was forced to surrender Detroit and the Michigan Territory just 10 days later. Tijame, thank you for joining us on our journey toward understanding and share the untold stories of our ancestors. To discover more, visit any of the links below.